Hello, I'm Christy Welch, and welcome to another edition of Marketing Matters. We're excited to be joined today by Kenzie Johnston, and we're going to learn about a recent research project she did about agritourism. So stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Christy Welch with the OSU South Center's Direct Food and Agricultural Marketing Team, and I'm happy to be joined this month for our Marketing Matters series by Kenzie Johnston. Kenzie is an Extension Educator in Delaware County. Welcome, Kenzie. Thanks for having me on the show today, Christy. Well, we're glad that you're here. As you know, our Direct Marketing Team does a lot of work with agritourism operations around the state. And so I'm anxious to learn more about what you learned with this research project. But first, Kenzie, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So um, like you've said, my name is Kenzie Johnston. I work in the Delaware County Extension Office about 40 minutes northwest of the Columbus campus. So relatively close to campus, but I work um, statewide as well as in the Delaware County area. So what that means is I work with the community development team working on business retention expansion projects at the state level, and then also work um, in Delaware County with the Master Gardener Association, as well as um, any agriculture topics or burning issues, I guess, that we have here. So more home port focus, but also we do some agritourism research as well. That's really interesting that you have a split appointment, what we call within the university, both in community development and ag and natural resources. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Great. Well, I'm sure that keeps your job very interesting. But as I mentioned, we're happy to have you here today to learn more about agritourism here in Ohio. So for those folks that maybe haven't heard that term before, not really sure what we're talking about, how do you define agritourism? Yeah, Christy, it's funny that you asked that question because when we began the study, we were all trying to figure out how we were going to define agritourism. And there's many definitions out there. Every state kind of has their own idea of what agritourism is. But here in the state of Ohio, and specific to the research that we did on this study, we defined agritourism as an ag operation that's inviting people to the farm to see what it is is happening whether that's growing pumpkins or having a vineyard full of grapes, selling Christmas trees, anything along that line. But anytime the farm is inviting customers out to see what is happening in the agricultural world. Very good. And so I would imagine that we have quite a few agritourism operations here in Ohio. And I'm curious to know, why did you think now was a good time uh, to do some research to learn more about this industry? So the whole reason for this study was that in the state of Ohio, we don't exactly have a great agritourism base, meaning there's lots of people doing agritourism, but we don't have all of those people in a collective platform. So we were hoping, one, to gain a little, I guess, a deeper understanding for how many people are doing agritourism activities on their farm and really what we can do as extension professionals to help them make more for their dollar. So the, the big idea was that, one, we would gain more interest in agritourism, or maybe somebody was doing it and didn't realize they were doing it, and kind of just reaching out to them to see how we can help. So again, uh, Kinsey, if we're talking about agritourism here in Ohio, so if you can see my background, uh, lots of farms around the state do like pick your own pumpkins in the fall. Um, I know you mentioned it a couple other types like vineyards. Um, can you expand on that definition just a little bit? What are some other types of activities that uh, Ohioans might be doing on farms? So some other activities that take part on agritourism farms, Christy, would be people coming out to maybe a strawberry patch and picking those berries. Um, different like fruits and vegetable seasons, of course, all of the berry seasons, peaches, apples, anything along those lines. And then also there's farms that are offering some farm to table events, some cooking events. Um, sometimes there'll be local grown honey, um, maple syrup, anything along those lines also do fit in that agritourism industry that we've defined here today. 
Well, that's amazing. I would suspect then there were a lot of operations that are taking part in agritourism that maybe didn't define themselves as agritourism. So let's go ahead and get to that research study you did and kind of set us up kind of what was the goal of the study again, and then share some of the results from that study, if you would, please. Yes, yeah, so like we had talked about briefly at the beginning, the first goal of the study was to really identify those agritourism farms in the state of Ohio and be able to build a base. So when we go to offer programs, we know who, we, who it is we can reach out to to help. Um, another goal from the study was really to estimate that economic impact that agritourism farms are having on their local communities across the state of Ohio. And finally, the third objective of the study was to be able to identify some programmatic efforts that extension professionals can help um, expand these agritourism farms, whether that's social media and marketing, um, legal advice, anything along those lines, just how can we develop programs to help make agritourism farms more successful. And with that study, did you find more or less operations in the state? Were you surprised at all by the number of responses that you got? So when we divided the state up, we de decided that we would define it into nine different regions. So when we came, when we went to give the survey results that we could give survey results specific to each location across the state. So we did like the Northeast, the Southeast and everywhere in between. So there were nine regions. And what was really cool about that was there was at least one farm that responded from each of the nine regions. So we ended up um, sending the survey out to roughly 300 agritourism farms that we were able to find just by doing our own research, which um, can sometimes be a little bit difficult but we did get 60 survey responses back. So almost 20% back. And we were satisfied with that because this was the first time that we, we, we had really reached out to agritourism farms. And so we're planning to continue the survey work in the future and hope we can get more survey responses across, across the spectrum next time. Great information. I hope that um, we will be able to learn more about these agritourism operations. I guess based also on the types of questions that you asked uh, for this survey, Kenzie, I know you mentioned that it's to help develop programming or assistance for these agritourism operators. Was there any kind of one theme that came up um, as a result of those questions? And did you happen to ask any questions that were related to COVID? And I say that because lots of folks that I have talked to uh, that have as agritourism operations really saw their numbers increase. Um, and I'm just curious if you asked anything about the pandemic in that particular survey. Yeah, we did. We did ask quite a few questions in regards to the pandemic and how the pandemic has affected their business. And I think when we talk about what really stood out in the survey were that a lot of agritourism farms really want to be better at marketing their business. And I think that's interesting because marketing has changed substantially over the last several years. And I think COVID has even played a part in that. I know for me, just, just speaking of me personally, whenever I get ready to go somewhere, I'm constantly checking Facebook, checking a website to see if they're open. I think COVID has changed a lot of people's hours and it's restricted what it is they're able to do. So before I do that, before I visit, I always go to their website. And so I had come from a marketing background anyway, and so it's always interesting to me how people are putting themselves out there on social media. And one thing that we determined from the survey was that people want more help when it comes to finding the trends that work for marketing in this year 2022. Um, one thing that I can speak to in that is that if you're not marketing yourself, then you're already where, really far behind, I guess is, is one way I'll say that. So um, I hope that something that we can bring, you know, full circle here across the state is ideas for how we can better market these agritourism farms. I think there's a lot of wonderful hidden agritourism farms that really need us to come support them, but we just don't know where they're at. Very good. Well, again, it sounds like great information received from the work that you've done. I'm curious to know um, if I'm an agritourism operator currently, or maybe I want to become an agritourism operator here in Ohio, um, what are some of the kind of basics that I might ought to be thinking about before I 
plant pumpkins or sunflowers or put an orchard in? Yeah, I think obviously the first question is to figure out what it is you want to be known for. And agritourism can go in many different directions like we talked about at the beginning of the, of the show here. And so really sitting down with you and your team and whether that's your family or your friends or maybe you're gonna hire some help, just really figuring out what it is you want to be known for and then reaching out and visiting farms that already do that. Because we don't necessarily need to replicate everything that's already happening, especially if you're gonna be in the same part of the state, but maybe focusing on what it is you can do unique, uniquely that someone else doesn't do. Um, for example, Pumpkins seem to be really popular, but what can you do to make your pumpkin farm different than everyone else's? Maybe think about different things that you can offer that might not already be out there. Um, I think the more you can learn at the beginning is obviously the better off you're gonna be, talk to people. And when you leave that conversation, ask them who you should go talk to, to help make your agritourism farm the best it can be. That's some really great advice. And I would, also, uh, be curious to know, Kenzie, you know, I work a lot with agricultural and natural resources educators throughout Ohio State Extension. I'm curious to know if community development educators have some maybe unique resources that are available to assist uh, agritourism operations. I think they can be, um, in my opinion, a very critical piece of any community throughout the state. And I just wondered if there are um, resources available for our operators through community development. Yeah, so our community development uh, program area does do a lot of work, not necessarily directly in agritourism, but they do do a lot of work in, in the tourism industry throughout the state of Ohio. Um, we, we have a program called the Business Retention Expansion Program which looks specifically at what kind of businesses we can bring into local communities to help make a difference in that community, whether it's generating dollars, bringing jobs, um, anything along that line, giving the community something to do. So as CD professionals, we can come in and conduct a BRE plan with your local community to help you kind of figure out where to get started and what kind of business would be beneficial to your community. Um, we also offer a lot of leadership development planning, um, some strategic planning if you wanted to work specifically on a strategic plan for your agritourism farm before you got started. Um, we conduct needs assessments, group facilitation, one-on-one -on -one interviews. So kind of just like all across the board, just bringing these programs to communities and helping develop the community in a way that it hasn't been developed before. That's really great information because I know, um, as you do know, that many of the most successful agritourism operations throughout Ohio and actually the country are very uh, community minded and um, really think that they can offer value to the communities in which they're housed. And so it's great to know that you have all those resources available uh, for folks that either wanna grow their operation or are looking to get started in agritourism. On a different note, I'm curious to know if through the research that you did, if there were any negative aspects uh, perceived by the respondents about agritourism. Um, I wouldn't say that we got negative responses back. If anything, people wanted us to ask more questions. Um, and I think one big key piece of the survey really looks specifically at where the agritourism farms were generating their income whether it was through direct sales, such as selling um, whole products on the farm, or whether it was through entertainment, um, overnight stays, different um, tourism events on the farm. So I think if anything, people wanted us to ask more questions and kind of figure out um, on a deeper level how much money is actually generated from agritourism farms, as well as from an employee standpoint, what kind of benefits are offered for those full-time employees if your agritourism farm does have full-time employees. That again leads me to the next question then, Kenzie, uh, based on what you just said, do you have plans to do another kind of survey of this uh, target group uh, to answer some of those questions? Yes, yeah, so we are planning to relaunch the survey possibly at the end of 2022. Um, when we originally started this project, we thought that it would be a three-year 
um, projects. So every three years we would ask these questions. But like I said, we had a lot of interest in the survey and um, a lot of people have asked for deeper questions or more questions. And so I think we might completely reconstruct what survey we do have and um, ask more questions and send it out to more people. So now that we've kind of got a small base established, we're, we are in the process of working with those 60 respondents to see what we can do to help make it better for them. Well, that's really great information. If somebody wanted to see the report from this study, where would they go? Is it published on a website somewhere that they could go check it out and learn more information? Um, so the survey is going to be published on a website. We have not got it published yet. It will eventually live on the community development website, which is comdev.osu.edu. Um, but you can also reach out directly to me via email, and I can email you a copy of the survey and talk with you more about the findings. So Kenzie, you also, also mentioned that you had asked a couple of questions about how the pandemic had impacted agritourism operations uh, around the state. And I know, you know, like our local restaurants, they really took a hit with having the closures and all those kinds of things. I'm curious to know what else, uh, in, what other impacts the pandemic might have had on your agritourism operations that responded? Yeah, so great question. We, we did want to ask some questions specific to the pandemic, because like you had said, the pandemic hit different industries um, incredibly difficult some more so than others. Obviously, the home and garden industry was killing it, but um, maybe the restaurants were not so much. So we did ask if uh, 2020 was a record-breaking year in regards to gross revenue, and two-thirds of the respondents did reply and say that they did have record-breaking years in 2020. And I think the one thing that we came up with in regards to why this happened was that people were really eager to get out. And when we think about the operation of an agritourism farm, it's typically outside, lots of room, um, something someone can do with their family. So it kind of includes the whole family. There's lots of fresh air. There's the ability to space out. And I think in 2020 specifically, this was such a great statistic to hear because there were a lot of agritourism farms that couldn't open and some that didn't know if they were going to be open until really the day the day of opening day, right? So I think it's one of those things that we can look back on and say that this probably helped the majority of the industry. And certainly I think there's a lot of things that we learned throughout the pandemic that we're going to implement going forward in these agritourism farms. That raises another interesting question in my mind, Kenzie. With this next iteration of the survey, will you include pre-pandemic information or questions about their operations pre-pandemic and how that then you could have those numbers to compare post-pandemic? Yeah, I think in the next survey that is going to be a good, a good thing that we do is just kind of compare looking back on the last three years, looking forward to the next three years, because I think not only did the gross revenue change, but a lot of people are now shopping more directly from the farm. They want, they want to go directly to the farm and purchase whatever it is they're, they're purchasing rather than going to the grocery store. I think another thing that we can look at in regards to that is the employment numbers. And I mean, the busier your agritourism farm is, the more employees you're going to need to hire, but also we don't have that many people to employ right now with the employee shortage. So I think there's gonna be a lot of things that really change throughout the agritourism industry in the next three years. So it's definitely something that we will want to compare over time. That's great. I know the whole employing people over uh, the last year and moving forward, it's not just agritourism operations either. Everybody is um, having a difficulty getting uh, the needed labor in this tight labor market. And so, the other question that I have, as far as your survey went, were there particular agritourism types that were more uh, greatly represented in the responses? So for example, did you have 30% of the respondents were from apple orchards or 25% of the respondents were from Christmas tree growers, or did you look at the type of agritourism operation they were? Yes, yeah, so when we went to ask, um, as far as like identifying your agritourism farm for confidentiality purposes, we didn't ask very specific questions, 
But as far as that question goes, we did ask in which seasons is your agritourism farm open? Um, and so that's how we kind of gauged whether or not they were doing winter activities such as Christmas activities and Christmas trees, um, fall activities, meaning more apple orchards and pumpkins, et cetera. And so the majority of respondents were open in the fall. So I think that leads us to believe that most of them were pumpkin farms, but there was also a substantial amount of people who responded that they were open in the spring or the early summer for those berries and fruit season. So um, we did ask a seasons question more so than we did specific to what kind of operation they had. But like I said at the beginning, one of the big questions we had was where were you generating your income? And 77% um, of income from farms was coming directly from products sold on the farm. Um, so we think those you pick farms and, and just different things that you can actually take from the farm with you back home. Very good. What other insights might you be able to share from the research study that you did or anything else you'd like to share about the agritourism industry here in Ohio and the work that you're doing? Yeah, I think um, the one thing that we learned from this survey is that there's always more things to figure out and there's always more things that we want to be able to help with. So I think spreading the word about agritourism here in the great state of Ohio and the benefits that it brings not only to these local economies, but there's jobs and there's um, different activities to do as a family. And so I think when we think about things that people can do that are not only educational, but, but good for your health and wellness. It's, it's to visit these farms and to support local farmers for inviting people out to the farm. Um, I think one thing that we would like to see in the future is just being able to implement some of these needs that farmers have and being able to bring in professionals and just figuring out how we can help agritourism moving forward, studying trends, looking at different things like that to help them make the most for their dollar. And so speaking of trends, um, do you have any insights that you can share with us today about what might trends might be happening uh, either coming here in 2022 or, or on down the road? Yeah, I think as far as trends go, there's a lot of things that the pandemic has, has forced upon agritourism farms or at least encouraged. And I think some of those things are here to stay. So when we think about trends, I think something that we can think about is online ticketing, um, more social media and marketing, and really just like making a name for yourself in that community. I think people are eager to support local, but it's just a matter of people knowing that you're, you're, there, you're there. So I think people are cautious to go back to indoor activities. So the more outdoor recreational activities that we can encourage or, or provide on the farm is, is going to be something to think about as well. But definitely things such as um, increased sanitation um, and limiting crowds, just, just doing more of those special things that we never actually thought about because we were so busy taking care of our farms. But I think people are really going to be looking at that moving forward. You know, Kenzie, I would imagine that many of the citizens of Ohio were introduced to agritourism operations through children at school. I know there are many operators around the state and the country that have done school tours. And I'm curious to know if I'm sure the uh, pandemic had an impact, uh, certainly on the schools. And I'm curious to know if you asked any of those questions about school tours in the survey. Yeah, Christy, we did. We asked more specifically on whether or not agritourism farms were going to be bringing the school tours back to their farms in a post-pandemic world. And a lot of the agritourism farms did indeed say that it's probably not worth the money um, to have those schools bring the kids out just from a logistics standpoint, hiring people during the day to be at the farm in order to give the tours um, usually most of the people who work on agritourism farms are high school, college age kids um, that are able to come after school hours or on the weekends. So as far as the school tours go, I think it's a big marketing piece for um, families, but I don't know that many farms will be, or many schools will be visiting the farm. Um, there were some virtual school tours that were used in place of those on-farm visits. 
That's really interesting. Of course, the pandemic has impacted everything around the globe. Uh, and so it's no surprise really that agritourism operations would be impacted as well. Any final thoughts that you'd like to share about the work you're doing? Um, I, I, I don't know. I guess to me, the survey was extremely interesting, just um, having some background in the agritourism industry and and watching really how it's grown over the years and just the way that people seem to flock to agritourism farms. So I guess I'll be most interested just to see moving forward what this looks like and, and really taking a look at those economic numbers down the line so we can really get a better idea for how much money is generated in these local economies. Well, Kinsey, it's been a real pleasure to have you here today and to learn about the research that you are conducting uh, on the agritourism industry here in Ohio. So we certainly thank you uh, for sharing the results of your study with us. And we would invite you to come back anytime after maybe you do the next survey or uh, you have more data from the survey that you did and, and feel like you'd uh, like to share, we'd love to have you. Again, I thank Kenzie Johnston, Extension Educator in Delaware County uh, for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to share the research that we've been doing here. And, and I hope that we can get more of you interested in the future of, of joining and collaborating with us here at Ohio State University. Well, for Marketing Matters, this is Christy Welch, Direct Food and Agricultural Mar Marketing Specialist with OSU Extension. Thank you.